Can Linux servers be hacked? Yeah, anything can be hacked, especially if you've done nothing to protect and harden your Linux server. Have you done that? Not sure? <laughs> Good, keep watching. In this video, I'm showing you five things you have to do to secure or harden your Linux server from hackers, from attacks. Now, disclaimer. Actually, no, we're protecting ourselves. No disclaimer, you wanna do this right now. Now, here's a cool thing. If you don't have a Linux server to protect or harden or secure, you can get one right now for free. No, really, you can. The sponsor of our video today, Linode. They are a cloud service provider and you can spin up a free Linux virtual machine lab right now. I'll show you how to do that here in a moment. Now, in this video, I got a little bit of help. Shout out to AWOL from my Discord server. He's one of my moderators, a Linux guru, and he helped me put this video together. Oh, and by the way, have you hacked the YouTube algorithm today? Make sure you do. Like this video, subscribe, notification bell, comment, all that YouTube stuff. Let's hack YouTube. Ethically, of course. Anyways, let's start securing our Linux server right now. All right, first, what do you need? Well, you need a Linux server, right? If you wanna protect one, you gotta have one. And if you don't, let's get you one right now for free. Check this out. Go ahead and click that link in the description below to access linode.com. Welcome from Network Chuck. So go ahead and get yourself signed up. You'll get a hundred dollar credit to create whatever you want. And in our case, we wanna create a Linux virtual machine, right? Let's do that now. Now, if you already have a Linux server that you wanna secure, use that. But if you don't, do this. Once you're logged in, go ahead and click on Create Linode. I'll do that now, Create. There's just a few things we have to do here. First, our distro, I'm leaving mine at Debian 10. Next, we'll select our region. Choose one that is close to you. Like I'm gonna select Fremont, California. I'm gonna scroll down to our Linode plan and choose the cheapest option, Nanode, one gigabyte. It's only five bucks a month and we have a hundred dollar credit, so we're good. It's a free server for you right now. It's awesome. Anyways, continue. We're gonna scroll down. Last thing we gotta do, well, second to last thing. We're gonna label it, can't touch this. And then put your password in. Just create whatever password you want. This will be your root user password. And that's it. Click create. And we're off to the races. A Linux VM being created in the cloud. I will never not love this. <laughs> it's amazing. Anyways, we're going to let that finish cooking. Perfect time for a coffee break. Okay, mine is ready. Let's do this. First thing we got to do is actually log into our server. We're going to use SSH. Now, I will be demonstrating this on Windows, but a lot of the steps are the same on Linux and Mac. Anyways, so right here I have SSH access. I'm going to go ahead and copy this bad boy right here. Click copy, copy. And here on Windows 10, I'm going to use PowerShell. Just search PowerShell and click on Windows PowerShell and launch that sucker. And then we'll go ahead and paste that command we copied by right clicking. Boom, there it is and hit enter. I do want to continue, type in yes. And now for our password. We're going to get rid of that, don't worry. And we're in. Okay, step one, and it's probably our most important step. Enable automatic updates. This is vital. Most servers get hacked because they weren't patched. They didn't have their security updates. And sure, we can update our servers manually, but we're gonna forget that crap. So let's get to work. Now real quick, I do wanna show you how to update your server manually, just in case there's an emergency or something. We can do this with two simple commands. First, apt update. With this command, we reached out to our repositories and said, hey, am I up to date? My system, my apps, and if they weren't, it would tell us right here. Now, according to this, I'm good. And if you just deployed your server, you might be too. And then to install any updates, if we had any, it'd be apt dist-upgrade. And hit enter. Again, I had nothing, so I'm good. You might have a lot, so let it do its thing. Now to have our updates install automatically because we're gonna forget, we will, I'll forget. We'll install this utility, apt install unattended dash upgrades and go hit enter for yes it is going to sit at 98 percent for a second don't let it scare you just take a coffee break and it'll be done here in a moment mm. and we're done now one more thing we need to set the sucker up and it's only one command not scary at all the command will be dpkg dash reconfigure space dash dash priority equals low and then right after that type in unattended dash upgrades now, don't worry, all these commands are below in the description if you just wanna, you know, copy and paste, but sometimes it's kind of fun to type it out, right? So let's do that. Anyways, hit enter. You're gonna get this pretty little menu here. Do I want to automatically download and install stable updates? Heck yes, I do. Hit enter. Now we're solid. That's gonna do it. Now, step two solves a massive problem we have right now, because watch this. Right now, I'm logged in as root. That's not good. Logging in as root is something you never, ever wanna do, especially over the internet. Come on. It's okay, I do it all the time. It's bad though, so it's not okay. So how do we fix that? Well, we just don't log in as root. We're gonna create another user. This user will have limited access, meaning he doesn't have the godlike privileges of root over here. But often when you actually wanna do stuff on your server, you need the power of root. So we'll add our user to the sudo or sudo 
group so we can do stuff. And we're gonna do that right now. We'll create our user with one command, add user, and then our user. Mine will be network chuck me, and hit enter. You'll be prompted for a password. Put in your password. One that you can remember. And then you got a few profile questions. I'm just gonna skip all that. Enter, 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 and we're good. Well, almost. We gotta add our user to the sudo group. Again, one simple command, user mod space. We'll do a dash lowercase a, capital G, that is important. And then we'll put in the group we wanna add them to. The group will be sudo. And then our user, network chuck. And done, hit enter and you're good. Now, why do we do that? Why do we need sudo? Well, a lot of the things you wanna do on your server require root privileges, which is the godlike account on your server. But we don't wanna use that account because it's kinda of dangerous. It's safer to use an account you create, and then when you need to use root privileges, you preface your command with sudo. Let me show you. And actually do this with me right now. We're gonna log out of root and we're gonna log in with our new account. So I'm gonna type in log out to get out of there. Connection closed. And let's log back in with our new user account right now. So the command will be SSH, my new username, network chuck at my server. Just 173.255, blah, blah, blah. Put in my password and I'm in with my new account. Now let's say is this user, I wanted to create a new user account. So I'll type in add user and we'll add Bernard Hackwell. Watch what happens. What? Command not found. We just used that command. Ah, but you see, we don't have permission to even know that command exists. <laughs> like we're, we're very limited in our power, but we have a magic word. The magic word is sudo. Sudo add user Bernard Hackwell. And it's gonna ask us for our sudo password, which is our normal password the one we used to log in. And suddenly that command works. We're basically getting the root's powers just for a moment for that one command. Pretty cool. So to verify that your sudo works, just type in any command really, sudo ls. And if that works, once you typed in your password, you're golden. Step three, passwords are for suckers, man. Now sure, your password might be 30 characters with 17 symbols and no hacker could ever brute force that, right? I don't know, maybe. Why take that risk? So let's do away with that whole password thing. We're gonna create an authentication key pair. And it's actually super simple, don't worry. And if you're new to this, I'm not kidding. We're not gonna use a password to log into our server anymore. Watch this. Now I'm gonna oversimplify this, but here's what we're basically doing. Right here on Windows, we're gonna create two keys, a public key and a private key. We're gonna give our Linux server the public key. And again, to kind of oversimplify this, you can think of the public key as like a, a padlock or something. And our private key being, well, a, a key. And the only way to log into our server or unlock this padlock here is to use this private key that we're gonna keep hidden, keep on our servers and not give to anybody. So right now let's create that public private key pair. Now first we gotta prep one thing in our Linux server. One command, I know I keep saying that, but it really is just one command. Again, it's in the description if you just wanna copy and paste. Otherwise, let's type it out. So the command will be mkdir or make directory. We'll put a space and then that weird squiggly <laughs> forward slash dot ssh. So here we're creating a directory to store our public keys. And then we'll do an and and, we're gonna add one more command in this thing here. We'll do chmod or change modification 700 and then that same location squiggly forward slash dot ssh and that squiggly means your user profile your home directory the user we created so network chuck for me and what is this command doing it's actually changing the permissions of that folder or directory so that everything that needs to access it can so anyways we're gonna hit enter right now boom and done that was easy right so now we're gonna leave our server we're gonna back out i'm gonna click or type in logout we're back home in PowerShell. You might be on Mac or your Linux terminal. That's a good place too. Now we're actually going to create our public private keys. And again, it's one simple, easy command. And yeah, it's gonna be the same on Mac, Linux, and Windows. So here we go. SSH dash key gen space dash B. And we're gonna specify how big we want our key to be. The bigger, the better, the more secure. I wanna say 4096 and hit enter. Boom, generating the public private key pair. Where do you wanna store it? This is the default location in Windows, I'll hit enter. Now for me, I already had a public private key pair I've created previously. That's why I have this message, that file already exists, or that key already exists. But for a lot of you, you've never done this before, so you won't get that message. So no worries, you're, you're fine. But if you already have one there, you may wanna save it as a different file, otherwise you'll overwrite this. And what that could mean is you might lose access to log in to other servers you have. Now for me, this was a test key, I have no problem overwriting that. So I'll say, yep, and do it. Now you can also do a password for your key. Basically you're putting your key into the lock and then you have to put a passcode in as well, which you don't have to and I'm not going to right now. So I'll just hit enter, enter, and we're good. Or I'm good. The keys have been created. Let's see what they look like. We're gonna enter the command CD or change directory and we'll navigate to our .ssh folder. 
and then type in ls to list the contents there. And there they are, our private and our public key. And we have one step left here. We want to upload this public key to our Linux server. Let's do that now. Now, this will be different on Windows, Mac, and Linux, but only slightly. I'll show you Windows first. We're going to use the secure copy protocol to throw our key up there. So <laughs> SCP is the command, space, and then this is Windows only. Do a dollar sign, ENV, colon, and then all caps, user profile, and forward slash dot SSH, forward slash your public key, which by default will be ID underscore RSA dot pub space. And now we got to tell it where we're sending it. So it's going to be network Chuck or whatever username you set up at my server IP address. And I forgot what it was. I gotta go find it real quick. Just copy that sucker once more, paste, and then colon right after the IP address. We'll do our squiggly forward slash dot SSH forward slash authorized underscore keys. Just like that. Once I hit enter, it is going to ask me for my password. Last time I'll ever have to use it. Watch this. Okay, it's up there. It's copied. I threw my public key up there. So now this is so cool. Check this out. I'm going to log back into my, my server here. SSH network chuck at my server IP address. I'm not going to put my password in. Straight in, baby. Look at that. That's awesome. So right here, I'm not using a password to log in. I'm using my public private key pair, which is much more secure because a hacker can't brute force that. Now for Linux, doing this is super easy. It's one command, like everything else. It's going to be ssh-copy-id and then your username at your server. For Mac, it'll almost be identical to the Windows way of doing it. The only difference will be right here at your user profile part where I have the dollar sign and the env. I'm going to remove that. And it will look just like this. The squiggly, which again means your home directory, forward slash dot SSH, forward slash ID underscore RSA dot pub. So yeah, passwords are for suckers and we took care of that. So we're good now, right? No, <laughs> because you can still use passwords on this server. It's just my account using the public private key. So step four, we're gonna lock down login or log ins. No more passwords across the board. And I got a few other things too. Let's do that. So I'm gonna get back into my server, SSH, network chuck, at my server IP, no password, love it, I'm in. So to lock down our logins, we're gonna edit a file. The file will be, and we're gonna use our sudo command now, sudo, and then we'll use my favorite text editor, I love it, nano. And then we'll put in our file name. So it'll be forward slash etc, or etsy, forward slash ssh, forward slash sshd underscore config, and hit enter. Oh, sudo password. Boom, we're in. In this file, we're gonna change a few things and it's nothing crazy, like check this out. First, we're gonna change the port. Now by default, port 22 is used by SSH. That's what we're using to log into the server. We know that and so do hackers, everyone knows that. So it would make sense to probably change that, right? We're gonna do that. Now you don't wanna use a well-known port or anything that might interfere with your current port usage. So something random and high, I'm just gonna throw in 717 just for fun. So port is done and now for address family just below it. Gonna remove that pound sign so it's no longer a comment. Now what we're gonna do here is change it to only use IPv4. Right now it's using any, which is IPv4 and IPv6. In most cases you don't need both. So I'm just gonna use IPv4. I'll type in INET. For most of you, this is what you'll wanna do, making it IPv4 only. Next, we're gonna scroll down to about to here where it says permit root login. Yes. No, we're not going to let root login anymore. <laughs> no, no more, sir. Root cannot log in via SSH anymore. Changing that yes to a no. We're almost done. Let's keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling until you see password authentication. Yes. No passwords. There's for suckers, dude. We're gonna change that yes to a no. And what this will do is change it to where no one, no one, can log into our server with the password. They have to have a public private key pair. That's the only way. And that is the only thing I care about changing on this document to secure and lock down my logins. So with nano to get out of here, I'm gonna hit control X, put in Y and then enter to save that configuration. And then I'll restart my SSH service. That command will be sudo systemctl restart sshd, boom. Now. We want to test it first because we could have broken something. Honestly, we could have. You might have locked yourself out of your system, but you're still you're still here, and that's good. Just don't log out yet. I'm going to open up a new terminal or a new PowerShell in Windows here, and I want to try and log in with my new stuff I've configured. SSH 
network chuck at my server IP. Now, this should not work <laughs> because right now it's gonna use the default port of 22, but we changed that, didn't we? So let's, let's see if this works. It shouldn't. Yeah, it's not looking good. Yeah, could not do it. Connection refused. That's what we want. So now to connect on our custom port, I'm gonna add the switch dash P717. That should do the trick. Let's test it out. I'm in. Yes. Okay. Custom port 717. And of course, whatever you change yours to. So at this point, we're looking pretty good. We've locked down our logins. Root can't log in. And if any other user wants to log in, they can't use a password because passwords can be hacked. They have to use a public private key, which I mean, those aren't completely unhackable, but they're definitely more secure than a password. Now, again, everything is hackable, but some things are more secure and we want to be on that side of things, right? Yes. Now, one more thing to harden our server, make it secure. Take that hackers. One more thing. Let's firewall it up. Let's lock it down, put our fence up, our perimeter. No one's getting in, except for me. Let's do that now. So first, I wanna see what ports are being used on my server here, or basically what's being allowed into my server. What holes are open? We'll do that with the command sudo ss-tupln. Boom. Sudo password. And let's take a look inside. So right now, I'm looking pretty good. The only port or hole in my server I have open is port 717, which is not the default SSH port, so it should be pretty hidden, pretty good. Like hackers aren't gonna look for that by default. They have to try pretty hard. Now, when you run that command, what do you see? Do you see just a ton of things listed? There might be some things that you don't want open, or maybe things you're not sure about. So in the case that you do see something weird that you don't know what it is, first Google it, because it might be something you need, like DNS or something. But if you Google it and it's something weird, uninstall it. That's what I would do. Just be careful. Now we're gonna get our firewall ready. I'm not gonna let anything into my server. To get our firewall set up, we're going to install something called the UFW, which actually stands for the uncomplicated firewall. It's basically a nice front end to mess with your firewall rules because it can get complex and this is not as complex. So let's try it out. First, we have to install it. Really simple, sudo apt install UFW, go. Now by default, it's not going to be enabled. So if I do sudo UFW status, It'll tell me status inactive. So nothing crazy going on just yet. But we're about to get crazy. Let's do it right now. <laughs> we're not getting too crazy. And the first thing I want to do before I put my fence up, my barrier up, is I want to put a window in or a door in where I want to come in, right? And that's going to be our SSH port. Now, again, normally that would be port 22, but we changed it. So we have to allow that custom port we did. I'm going to allow mine right now. So the command will be sudo ufw allow, and then my port number, 717. And... That's it, rules updated. Now, if I do a sudo UFW status, I shouldn't see anything just yet. Yeah, it says inactive. So now what'll happen is I'll enable this firewall and it should block everything except that port 717. So let's try it out. The command will be sudo UFW enable. And yeah, it could disrupt some things. It could break things, but you should be fine within your session right here. So I'll hit Y and it's active and it will be active the next time you reboot it and everything else. So let's do a sudo UFW status once more and we can see what's going on. It's active and it's allowing my 717 port. So now before we do anything, <laughs> let's try to log in um, from another terminal or PowerShell window just to make sure we can get back in. So again, command SSH network chuck at my server, specify my custom port with dash P 717 and Okay, we're in, we're good. <laughs> Nothing blew up. Now, if you're running things on your Linux server that you want exposed, like maybe you have a website, like let me install one real quick. sudo apt install apache2. Yeah, I'll install it real quick just for fun. Then I'll start it up, sudo systemctl start apache2. So now I have a website running on my server. If I do uh, sudo ss-tupln to see what ports I'm listening on, I've got an extra one now. Not only 717, but I also have port 80, my website port, HTTP. But that doesn't mean you can get to it because my firewall is probably blocking it. Let's test it out. I'll open up my web browser real quick, navigate to that IP address, and it's not loading. <laughs> and that's what I expected. Let's go allow it. So let's get back to our terminal here. Same command as before, sudo ufw allow, but this time the port will be port 80. And I'll do a forward slash and say TCP because it is TCP port 80 and hit enter. We'll add it. Now let's see if that website works now. Ah, it does immediately. Now, sometimes you might have to restart or reload your firewall, but in this case, we're solid. Now there's one more thing I want to do with our firewall. And it's, it's pretty important because like, I don't want hackers to be able to find out my server is there. My server exists. And a lot of times a server can be found out 
just by pinging the IP address. Like, look here, got another window open here. I'll ping my IP address. Go ahead and do this now as well. Ping your server. I'll do a dash T so it's continuous here. And yeah, you can ping it, which is a great utility to make sure your server is up. But that tells the hacker that your server is up and ready for attacks. I don't want that. I want to stay hidden. So we can actually block pings, which yeah, also means you won't be able to ping it, but this is often a best practice to protect your servers. So let's go do that right now. Back in our Linux machine, we're going to edit another file. So the command will be sudo nano, and then our file name. It'll be etsy ufw before.rules. And let's jump into that file. We're gonna add one line to this file here. So I'm gonna scroll down to the section where it says, okay, ICMP codes for input, right here. We're gonna add one line here, Again, it's in the description. I'm not gonna type this one out. I'm just gonna copy and paste. I'm just gonna hit enter here, right click to paste. There she is. Hit control X, Y, and enter to save my rules. Now, if I check back at my pings, they're still happening because this might be a situation where I have to restart my firewall. So I'm gonna do that right now. The command will be sudo ufw reload. This might do it. Let's, let's test it out. Okay, reloaded. Let's see if our pings are working now. So upon a reload, it's not applying the rules. I'm just gonna do a reboot of my server. So I'll do a sudo reboot and uh, we'll see if that works. Coffee break. So it should be rebooted. I'm gonna get back into my server here. Same command. And we're back in, so it is up. Let me check on my pings. Pings, they're not happening anymore. Let me, um, let me restart my pings here. Another continuous ping, let's test it out. Now, pings are, pings are not happening, they're down. Secure. All right, you made it till the end. We hardened our Linux server. Now, I gotta say this, nothing's unhackable. What we did here today is best practice and it will help keep you safe, but it's not foolproof like anything. Everything is hackable, everything. But most often those big hacks and attacks you hear about, they happen in environments that haven't been properly secured or patched. So just by doing this, you're already ahead of the game. Anyways. That's the video, that's all I got today, guys. Let me know your thoughts. What do you do to secure your Linux server? Comment below. And again, shout out to Linode, our sponsor, and they're, they're awesome, I love those guys. It's so fun to spin up things in their cloud and quickly lab things. So if you did not use them to do this lab, try it out. Again, it's a $100 credit when you first sign up, so it's risk-free. I don't like that term, a risk-free trial. Sounds gimmicky. It's not though. <laughs> They're really cool. Oh, and also, if you haven't seen my new merch, it's the shirt I'm wearing right now. It comes on a t-shirt and a mug. Uh, Networkchuck.coffee, check it out. And we also have coffee there. Anyways, uh, don't forget to hack that YouTube algorithm. Like button, subscribe, notification bell, all that youtube -y stuff. And yeah, yeah, that's all I have, I promise. We're done. I'll catch you guys, uh, I'll catch you guys next time. This is cold coffee I've been recording for a while. Here we go. Ugh, cold coffee, oh, that's terrible. All right, later.